Okay, um, right now I'm going to be showing you how to do a bandage change for a central line. I have a Hickman catheter, which goes directly into my heart here. Um, well, not directly, it goes up and around my collarbone, but you get the point. Um, I use one of these packets, which has most of the stuff you need inside of it. Um, you want to have some form of alcohol, and iodine's helpful. Um, I got, oh crap, these are both iodine. Um, iodine sticks, like these, um, and alcohol pads. They also make alcohol ones of these, but apparently I'm out. Um, you also want to have either gauze or one of these AMD antimicrobial discs, which is a little foam disc dressing that you just put around the catheter. Um, if you don't have these, you can buy this at a store, iodine tincture, and just put some on a gauze pad. Okay, um, so I'm going to tilt this so you can see. Sorry if you're looking at my chest here. Um, so you take this, and you open it, which might take a minute, especially if you're me. And inside, it has a mask, which you will want to wear. Like that and just pinch it so it stays on the bridge of your nose. Okay, and then um, a pair of gloves, which you open, and it tells you that this is where the thumb is. If you don't have all this, I wouldn't freak out. Um, I did it for quite a while without all this, even though the nurse who I was talking to kind of flipped on me when I told her that. Um, she was kind of freaking out that I had been doing it without any gloves or mask or anything. Um, so apparently you're supposed to do that. It's hard to do it on yourself because you have to look down. And it's kind of hard to see straight down past the nose. Sorry, I, I talk weird when my um, head is tilted down so I'll try not to do that. So you want to get your hand inside the glove without touching the outside of the glove as much as possible. If you do have to touch the outside of the glove, try to use this to kind of just straighten it out. So there's one. For some reason, doing this always makes me want to dress up like some creepy lab experiment gone wrong. I don't know. I have a few problems. <laughs> so there you go. With the gloves. I don't know why I just did crab fingers with the gloves, but there we go. So there's that. Um, this is this. For a port like this, if you don't want to take your shirt off altogether, which I won't do right now, you can take it out like this and put it down inside your shirt and kind of do that just so you don't get any extra anything anywhere like that. So then, um, it does come with chloroprep. I can't use that because I'm allergic to it. Um, this is better than alcohol wipes, so if you do have this, use it. Um, it comes with alcohol wipes as well. Some people do alcohol wipes and then the chloroprep, um, which, you know, you can do. It also comes with a ruler. It's, um, suggested to measure from port to tip every time you change your bandage, which I'm not going to do because it's already taped up here. Um, and it does come with a Tegaderm pad, which I'm highly allergic to, so I will be using, oh dear, oh dear, my IV 3000, which is generally for IVs in hands or arms, um, but it does fit this one, so that's what they gave me to use. I probably should have just done it. So we're gonna, gonna do that a little bit. Um, like that. Get everything out of the way there. So then, taking alcohol pad and cleaning the site just all around it. Alcohol only cleanses as long as it is wet, so it's a good idea to have the iodine. Um, most people don't have these. Um, you really should look into getting those. 
um, but this will work just fine. If you take a gauze pad and some of this, just dump a little bit on the gauze pad and rub it around. I'm gonna use this though, so open it up and peel it off. And there's three little sticks inside. So I'm gonna just take it. Oh, that's my phone. And rub it. Um a fairly large area around it. You don't have to go too crazy. Um there are three in here. I guess that's because, you know, they're used for pre-surgery. <laughs> and you need a bigger area. And I love this stuff. Um, you can put it back inside. I'm just going to kind of put it in the corner here and then grab the next one. And like this. You don't really need to use all three because otherwise it just starts leaking down everywhere. But... And, you know, it does come off, so whatever's not under your bandage will just come off after a little bit. I don't really need all three, so I'm just going to do that. Toss it in my trash can. Um, I need to grab a tissue because it is seeping down. Look here, that was my phone again. My boyfriend seems to text me rather late at night. It's almost midnight right now. Um, so there's that. I'm going to use one of my antimicrobial discs. If you don't have these, I would suggest um, cutting up, oh my goodness, um, cutting up a gauze pad. So you can put a small strip underneath the tubing, right at the bottom, just so it doesn't chafe at the skin. Um, and then one on top. Sorry, I'm having trouble breathing all of a sudden. It might be the mask. Um, as soon as I get this one, I'll take the mask off. So there's this. And it opens up, right like this. Take a little Pac-Man. Or Pac-Woman, depending on what you had access to when you were a child. <coughs> I don't know why I just turned into my arm, wearing a mask. Um, okay. So I can take my mask off now that I've done that. Um, <coughs> I just kind of threw something across the room here. You do want to wait a bit till this dries, um, because you don't want it all to come off. So, um, gauze pad, tissue, as long as you're not touching the site itself with, um, a tissue, it should be fine. You should use a sterile gauze pad if you're going to touch the site itself. Um, you do want to dry it a little bit if you're impatient, which I kind of am. So then you're going to take your whatever it is, whether it's your Tegaderm or your IV3000 or um, another one for sensitive skin is Hypofix. Take it out. Again, if you use gauze, put gauze under and over. If you're using this, just open it and put it right around the side there. Just like that. And then this opens complicated, so you first peel it here. And then that's the sticky part. And then this part comes off. This part here comes off too. Um, so you kind of set it right down over the middle. That's not really the middle. There we go. Over the middle, like that. And then grab the tab, peel it off. And press it so that kind of all the air bubbles are out. Um, I can take these clumps off now. Make it in my way. Like that. And then go under. And pull this one off. And go to get all the air bubbles out of that too. These are awesome because they kind of kill any bacteria that tries to get in there. And it doesn't even like smell weird or anything. Which a lot of the cool things that claim to do the same thing do smell. Um, you guys, right here, this tab comes up, so you kind of got to keep pushing until it sticks to your skin. There we go. And it's going to peel up, leaving that clear spot behind. And there we go. And then you can just take it off and dispose of all of it in the trash as you would anything else. Um, and there you go. It's 
a really good idea if you don't have gloves to at least use a lot of hand sanitizer. Um, I really recommend being as careful as possible. And I know you, you're thinking, like, oh, this is careful enough. But I have had a couple of close calls because of that. And I do not recommend haphazardly doing it. Um, if you can, having a nurse come to your house to change your bandage really is ideal. But um, if it gets wet at all, you have to change it. So it's not, it's not, it's not always practical to have a nurse come every time. Um, so like I said, even if you don't have one of those kits, as long as you have, um, sterile gauze, alcohol pads, um, and preferably iodine, as well as some kind of cover, you should be good. Um, a lot of doctors say you can just put a band-aid over it after a while. I don't recommend that at all. Um, I mean, come on guys, it's a, it's a port to your heart or to a vein very near your heart, whether it's in your arm or your chest. It's a, it's a scary thing to have, and it takes a while to get used to, but, you know, there you go. That is how you change the bandage. Um, and, yes, you, you do need iodine. Um, it's, this bottle was like four dollars, maybe six dollars, um, at Walgreens. It's not expensive, um, and that lasts a while. If you don't have gauze pads, you can use a Q-tip, um, but just try to be as clean as possible.